Hello, welcome to Creative View Podcast. I'm Katherine Kirby, your host. It is a podcast about knitting and crocheting and life and serving Jesus Christ. So if you are not into the following Christ part, I welcome you anyway. I do that at the end, but I hope you stay because there's nothing more exciting in this life than knowing the truth and serving God. There's no greater joy. So let's get started. We've had some beautiful snow since the last two podcasts. It was so beautiful. And back in biblical days, the idea of snow meant purity and things are so beautiful and so pure when everything is covered with snow. And as I was sitting inside watching it snow, the squirrels were outside running around and playing. It was really exciting <laughs> and fun to watch. So our house has become very noisy with the new dog. I mean, be careful what you wish for because it might come true. He's a Siberian Husky and I couldn't wait for him to talk, but this can go on for hours. And I don't always know what he wants. He likes to play with the, the foster dog, Zoe, but she gets tired. And then he comes to me and says, whoa, 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 whoa. And it's like, what, what? There's also been behavioral problems and chasing the cat. Today I found a cat claw in his fur. <sighs> the, um, the other foster dog, Duke, who's a boxer, Wicket, Whip It, he fought for alpha control and he got it for a while, being the alpha dog, but then that that wasn't, there was a fight and then Duke became afraid. And, and one night my husband and I were in the kitchen, slow dancing and dogs sense that intimacy. They sense that closeness and uh, the Husky, Jake was there. And all of a sudden Duke came down the steps and started hopping around and prancing. And um, we kind of stepped back like, is this going to be a dog fight? But no, he was making friends. So I thought, great, no more dog fights. But the next night, my husband was sitting in this chair and Duke likes to jump up and give him hugs while Jake jumped up behind Duke to give Duke a hug and uh, that that erupted into a fight, but nothing since. So I am almost finished the second Felix pull over. This isn't a good picture because you can't see the lacy part that's on the front and the back of each shoulder. This will all come out. It is a certain type of cast on um, that I had never done before. And yeah, it is a little bit of work, tubular cast on, but it is worth it. So this is Cat Mandu Aran Yarn. It's a merino cashmere. It's nice, it's really nice. So I'm almost finished one sleeve, Whoa. have the other sleeve, and then I have another one to make. It is a fun pattern. Um, the lace work keeps it interesting. It's a Aran weight yarn or what's called a heavy worsted yarn. And I have the Addy knitting machine, so I made another Hat. I'm kind of experimenting with the stripes. This is a tube inside a tube, but if this would be for a child, how did I have that? I don't think I'm quite getting my colors um, 
where I want them, but it's kind of cute. Um, I think this was called the Queen of Hearts or uh, the color from Cascade Erin. This would be the other side. There we go. So it is double, double warm. And I decided that this has to be the year of sweaters for me. So I started another sweater. I don't have the magazine here. This is an Interweave Knits magazine and it has a decorative, not, I guess like a faux cable of sorts. It's a garter bottom, which is curling. I was also kind of puzzled because it starts waist shaping really early, like way down here, way down here. And in the picture, the photo looks a little baggy behind her back. So you taper it and then you bring it back up. This is Ella Ray Rustic Aran. It's another Aran weight yarn. And I have a few more inches, but owning a yarn shop, people will often walk up to the counter and they'll start talking. And then an hour later, they may still be talking. So I thought it would be good to have a project that I can just knit while they're talking. As far as Oh, I have the big baby blanket, but I don't have it here with me. Showed it to you the last time I finished the blanket. I'll do it the next podcast. And then you do the garter edge separately and kind of sew it. So I'll, I will remember. I'd love to hear what all, all of you are working on, what you're making. Please comment because if I don't get comments, I, I, I don't know what people are doing or thinking, or um, I also noticed I had a commercial the last time and I don't get any kind of money and I don't want commercials. I don't want you to have to sit through commercials. So I'm going to figure out how to disable the commercials. I wanted to try a new stitch. There is a crochet tutorial on this called the crochet smock stitch or the honeycomb stitch. And it's not perfect because I think I got off of her. I think this bottom is a pretty true representation of it. It is very heavy though and stiff and curling. So if I used a bigger hook, I thought it would be great for an ear warmer or a hat. It is fun. Once you get the repeat rows down, the way you do these crossovers, it is fun. So I will give you the link for that or how to, uh, how to get to, to the tutorial. So, what else in crochet? I don't have everything here because sometimes things are at the shop. There's a designer, Krista Basta, and she's done a lot of neat knitting patterns. She has a crochet pattern for slippers called Ah Spa Slippers. And it's a free pattern. And to get this ridge, you do so many stitches in the front loop and then the back loop and the front loop and the back loop so that you have the nice ridge. Now I tried these last year and they look like they fit a child. And I don't know why you do two strands of worsted weight yarn. And I love to what I call Mary yarns so marry them together so i picked a pacific worsted and then an acrylic worsted and i like it i like 
I like the way it looks. I do. The Bonita is striping, so you, you do kind of get that. This one's almost finished. So you go around and then you come down and do this part. Now, my husband, he's, he's had serious health issues and he has swollen legs. So I'm making him a bigger pair. Oh, this, this will be his second one. And I always use my patterns as worksheets. I write all over them. I know some people will do it in a notebook, but you know, if you have access to a printer and you can reprint a, a pattern and start over, I find it really helpful even to know where I am or what I'm doing or what modifications I made. So these are, are his. He takes about a nine and, and a half shoe. And it is the type of pattern that once you make a pair, you want to make more and they're really comfortable to, to wear. So what else am I doing? I have a lot of works in progress, but I get impulsive and Mary Whitener, who comes into the shop a lot. Hi, Mary, if you're watching, she made a beautiful shawl out of silky wool which is a uh, Elspeth Levold silky wool. And I decided to just spontaneously do one. <laughs> and this is where I'm at. So this is color A, but color B, I maybe wish maybe I would have had more of this color, but it's like a a persimmon and a sailor blue and a cream. And it is called Let's Run Away Number Three by Finicky Creations. But this pattern is done with a fingering weight yarn. And this is a DK or a number three yarn. So it didn't take long to realize this thing would be humongous. So I've been knocking out some rows and stopping early so I don't get as many um, stitches. It's kind of like a sampler. And this stitch here, I wasn't crazy about, but I see that once it's blocked, it will have some beauty. And I kind of wish maybe I had to put a fourth color in there like Mary did, but you know what, it will all work out and I can always make another one, right? So there is a podcast called Finnish, F-I-N-N-I-S-H, Finland, Finnish Knitting Stories, I think. And she, I wish I had my iPad up and running because then I could hold the phone up and show you things. But she started out her last podcast. She is doing an emotional support chicken by, is it Knitting Tree? Hmm. And it doesn't take a lot of yarn and you can use scraps. And if you go to Ravelry and you look at all the chickens that have been posted, Oh, excuse me. I didn't get to bed at all the night before, so now I'm going my second night. Um, they're all different. They're all unique. You can use scraps. You can do the worsted weight like the pattern calls for. On that podcast, she did three strands of sock yarn that she had. So one skein of Noro Creon, which is this and a contrasting color will do the chicken i think so you start out with short rows if you don't know how to do short rows she has a nice tutorial you make these and you sew them together 
So I decided I would do two at one time. And I also saw, I'm a copycat, that someone had made one with Plymouth Kudo, K-U-D-O, which is like a cotton, is it linen type blend? So there's my two pieces and there's my contrasting color, which is going to be this brown. And then you pick up stitches and knit along. So that's where I'm, it's a really cute idea. And my husband and I, we, we were at it for probably a good half hour or more looking at all the different chickens, picking out our favorites and, um, and you know, the possibilities are endless. So I also found a project that I never finished. And so it is going to get finished. It is called First Fair Isle Anything by Irene Ramalho. She calls it a cow headband, but I do the two-handed Fair Isle, which goes really fast. I'm thinking I should have used a smaller needle for the ribbing because this is what's called flailing because Fair Isle will pull in. So if the ribbing isn't done several sizes smaller, it will flail. I'm also thinking that my pattern here doesn't show up very great like this does because I'm using a Debbie Bliss Rialto DK, which is now discontinued. And when you hit the white, I think it messes up the pattern because you can't see it against the light gray. Once I hit the blues, you can see it really well. When I get to the white again, I think I'm gonna cut it and just do the colors that will go together. And I'll show that to you the next time. I couldn't remember the last time if I talked about the movie, The Climb. It's a Billy Graham movie. It's free on YouTube. It's about two climbers who are going to do a very dangerous climb. One is a Christian man, one is not. One is very reckless which recklessness causes danger. Um, recently, a Christian was telling me about his favorite song, and it's about God's reckless love. And I'm like, God's love isn't reckless. If you look up the definition of reckless, it means going forward with your actions, not caring what happens to anybody. I mean, who wants to be around a reckless driver? So I was um, put off by that and I, I didn't get it, but sometimes catchy tunes draw you in. Um, I mentioned the last time the carnivore diet which is like the Atkins diet. And it's basically all animal-based products. So you can have pork, chicken, meat, lard, you know, bacon, bacon. And contrary to what medical doctrine puts out there, that does not cause heart disease. The natural things are natural. They found out many years ago when people went on the Atkins diet, their cholesterol panels were beautiful. So I am doing this because of my fibromyalgia, gut issues, bloating, and I think I'm on day something like 30. So I don't have the bloating. I don't have the reflux. I don't have the severe morning headache. I'm not doing the teeth grinding and the biting my lip at night. I'm not waking up with terrible allergies and snoring, which I thought was our cat, but it seems like it's food. I've lost 10 pounds 
and 10 inches. Um, so what happens is fat cells won't break down when you have an insulin surge and we get insulin surges from eating carbs. And so I'm down two pant sizes and I'm really liking that, but I'm liking not being terribly bloated. So for the Christians out there, if you've never watched Randy Kay on YouTube uh, years ago, he died, he went to heaven, he had an encounter with Jesus. Jesus also talked about the end times. He didn't come forward with this until 2021, but this is his new book out and it's definitely a worthwhile read. I'm almost finished. I like zoom through it because it was so interesting. All right, well, we got through that fast. My husband already went to bed and I said, I'm gonna do a quick podcast. I've been getting in trouble looking at seed catalogs online, dreaming about flowers. Last year in Pennsylvania, we had a very disappointing summer. We didn't see the sun much. We didn't get much rain. We didn't see the stars much. At first, they blamed it on the Canadian wildfires, but I don't know. We've had more sunshine this winter. So not being able to grow much here, we don't get a lot of sun on our property. Um, I took a bunch of stuff over to the shop because the rear parking lot gets sun, but we didn't have enough sun to get things to flower and bloom. This year I'm dreaming. I putting all these seed packets in my cart, picturing blue morning glories at the rear of the shop. I don't know, you gotta have some money though, right? <laughs> gotta have the money. The other thing I wanted to mention was essential oils. You can get a two ounce bottle of essential oils, probably as cheap as $8.99, depending on the scent. If you're paying for fabric softener, don't. It's, it's a toxic product. You can either buy dryer balls or make dryer balls and add a drop of essential oil or two. Most essential oils have something like 200 or more drops per bottle, so they can last you a long time. Put a couple drops of essential oil on your dryer bulb, put them in the dryer, and they actually save you money too. I have about five or six dryer balls in the dryer, but I don't put essential oil on all of them, but they fluff up the laundry so that it dries um, quicker. So that's kind of my tip. And you can make all, do all kinds of things with essential oil. All right, so how are all of you doing with your faith walk? Um, are you advancing in the faith? Are you digging your roots deep? Are you learning how to just be in God's presence and just praise him. Are you reading the scripture? Because that's what goes into your mind, which rules your heart. Yeah, all these movies about follow your heart. No, it's your mind rules your heart. And you can't put scriptures in and not be changed. The word of God is alive, right? It's living. So I was praying about what God wanted me to share tonight. And I want to share Bartimaeus. So Bartimaeus is found in Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 46. And Bartimaeus was a blind man. I took all these notes, and where are my notes? Huh, where are my Bartimaeus notes? Hold on one minute. And no, well, I might have to just wing it here. Wow, that's 
whatever, right? Whatever. Nope, I don't see it. So Bartimaeus was blind, but some commentators, he was the son of Timaeus, feel that his father was also blind. So this was kind of like a double whammy. My husband, he was the oldest, and then four years later, his brother, and then maybe four years later, his sister. And when his mother was pregnant with his sister, she developed diabetes and became blind. So that changes everything when you have a mother who's blind. My husband had years where his mother wasn't blind, but his sister never had that. But then imagine if she also had been blind. So Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. And he now there was an upper Jericho and a lower Jericho. The upper Jericho, that's where Herod had his palace up there and everything. And a great number of people and his disciples. And here's blind Bartimaeus sitting by the highway. Now, the Bible has really been coming to life for me. Been reading it for 39 years. I read it cover to cover. But then in the morning, I'll read some Psalms. I'll read uh, the Proverbs chapter of the day. I put a lot of hymns on during the day. And there's a, um, a Jewish Christian, Aaron Schust, S-H-U-S-T, who writes beautiful music to the Psalms. If you go to my Facebook page, now not my Creative You Facebook, but my Catherine Kirby Facebook, you'll see a lot of Christian things that I post and nobody's looking at them. And I'll post songs and just different things. I found um, a group called GBB, God Behind Bars. And let me tell you, Prisoners all over the world are coming to Christ in hundreds, bowing down, worshiping, gangs hugging each other, making peace with each other, and such joy. And that's what we need on the outside, the joy of the Lord. I mean, many people have prisons of their own making, whether it be pride or victimization or whatever. But could you picture yourself sitting by the highway, begging? Think about it. I mean, we all complain. We get the doldrums. We get the ho-hums. We get the um, crisis of the day, like when I pulled out of the driveway and hit my husband's car last week because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know he came home, was parked there. We all have those things that, that, but can you picture yourself sitting by the highway begging? And if you don't get money, you may not eat that night. You may be cold, even hungry in the blistering heat, but you're sitting there and that's your that's your lot in life. You have to beg. And maybe you even have to take money home to your blind father. I don't know. In those days, if you were disabled, blind, whatever, you had to wear a special garment so that people knew. Whether you got examined by someone, I don't know how it worked. But I know that you weren't allowed to go into the temple you had to be in that outer court area that we talked about last week where all the tables of merchandise were. So when he, Bartimaeus, heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, son of David is a messianic term. He is calling Jesus the Messiah. They knew that King David had the promise that Messiah would descend 
from his family. He is calling on Jesus the Messiah. He is crying out. And think about the great multitude and all the noise and clamor and trying to be heard over top of that. Just picture it. I have a voice that doesn't carry well. I mean, you'll hear some coaches or pastors and their voice just goes way out. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. Basically, shut up, can it? Now, I was telling my husband, when the gospels start out, people are sharing Jesus. So Philip goes and tells Nathan Neal, I've found the Messiah. Andrew and Peter, James and John found the Messiah. But as you get near the crucifixion, and there are these great multitudes pressing in, you find that they want to send people away. Because before this was the little children. I think Jesus was such a man of joy, laughter, that children just wanted to climb on him and play with him and even the disciples no go away go away don't bother him so we have this transition to wanting to bring people to jesus to repelling them and i had to really think about this and i thought as a christian do we sometimes repel others from Jesus. Judging people, oh, that person's really needy, or, you know, that person has so many problems. That person is just filled with self pity or pride, and we don't take them to Jesus. We don't lead them. We don't talk about it. You know, recently I was talking to a man out on the street when I was shoveling. And he began to tell me that he had cancer. And I said, can I pray for you? And he said, oh, well, no. Like, basically, not here. So God actually brought him into the shop. He has a loom he wants to sell. And he said, oh, it's as big as this counter. Well, number one, I'm not a weaver. Number two, would I be a weaver? Um, it's big. Where would I put it? It's only, it's cheap. So here's a little funny insert. A married man was telling us about the difficulty of telling his wife no to certain things. No, we can't afford that. No, we can't do that. And she gets upset. And I said to my husband, Sometimes one of the best things that a husband can say to his wife is no. Meaning, no, we can't afford that. No, we're in this together. No, we're pulling our money and there's just no way. Um, so about an hour later when we go to bed, I tell my husband that someone is giving away a baby grand piano free. Now, it would cost to have it hauled, but... I don't know how you get it in the door. And my husband says, no. I'm like, what? And he says, no. I'm like, no, what? No, we don't want that. I'm like, I want it. So, I don't know. But do we sometimes make a decision that, well, I don't think I'm gonna to talk to that person. So back to this man's story, he comes into the shop and we're talking about the loom. And I say to him, I didn't mean to embarrass you that day out on the, the street, um, but I would like to pray for your healing and we're separated by the counter. And he just kind of looks at me and I said, I have faith for both of us, come on. So I pray for him. And when I'm finished, he says, well, you know, I did used to go to a Pentecostal church and I was dating 
the minister's daughter and I'm like, well, how's, how's your faith journey going now? And he said, well, I try. Hey, forget the try. It's submission. It's Christ working through you. You can't turn over a new leaf. You, all your, all your trying will be in vain unless Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branches, abide in me. We talked about the last time how Jesus cursed the fig tree because it was all leaves. Should have been lots of fruit, but it's just all show and how people can just be all show. And the next day it was dried up. It was dead wood. If you're not abiding, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. You know what happens when the branch isn't in the vine? It's just dead wood, good, good for nothing. So many charged him, Bartimaeus, that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more. And he just didn't cry a little. He cried a great deal. He made quite a racket. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He's screaming above the clamor of the cloud. Now, I love this next part. And Jesus stood still. What do you think about that? When you are screaming out for Jesus, crying out in so much distress, screaming for help, Jesus just stops and he stands still. And I wonder if we do that. When we're busy, we're going here and there, we have a schedule and somebody has a need, do we just suddenly stand still? I was reading a story about a pastor who was on his way to a pastor's convention and he's at the Metro and he sees this man in great need. And he tells himself, well, I'm busy. I'll, I could be late. I could miss the train. I'll miss the plane. But God kept speaking to him and telling him, is that what's really important? So he went back, but the man wasn't there. And then he, at the conference, another pastor said, well, I, I was there, I helped him, but do we stand still? Jesus was on his way to the crucifixion, really, and he stopped. The individual is always so important. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Now imagine, you're in an enormous crowd of people and all of a sudden Jesus sends for you. He knows you by name. <sighs> and they called the blind man saying, be of good comfort. Now we've also looked at that word comfort before that it can mean to make you brave. Um, rise he calls you he calls for you can you imagine the king of king and the lord of lords and you cry out and he says come here come to me and bartimaeus casting away his garment what faith i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be blind anymore i'm not gonna be disabled i don't need this I don't need this to define me. How many of us are ready to give up our problems? Some people have problems that define their life. Sometimes I met a woman one time that was married to an alcoholic man, and that is how she got all the kudos from her family every Saturday, the boo-hoo, and we don't know how you do it, and you must be a saint. She was not ready or willing to throw off her garment. Think about it. Are you willing to throw up what throw off what defines you to have spiritual eyesight? And he came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what, what would you like me to do for you? Now, I've heard some testimonies of people that Jesus appeared to them and said, 
what would you have me do for you? Ah. Oh. The blind man said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And you know, blindness in the scriptures speaks to us about our spiritual blindness. People look up at the beautiful sky, the birds, the bird song, the trees. We have, um, all our spring bulbs coming up because we had a burst of warm weather and they they're spiritually blind that god made all this they're spiritually blind that every day we have here is a gift and immediately he received his sight and i love the end jesus said go your way but when he immediately received his sight, he followed Jesus in the way. He followed Jesus in the way Jesus went. He didn't just walk away. And that's what we should all do. Not go back our own way into the old life, but follow Jesus in his way. Oh, beautiful, isn't it? Let it sink in because it's now after he was healed he called Jesus Rabboni now a lot of the new Bibles are changing things and it's horrible and this woman said well my Bible says Rabbi there's only one other place in the entire Bible where anybody called Jesus that and that was in John and that was Mary. That means master. That means God the master. That means my master. It's so beautiful. And I heard recently that in the part about the rapture, when two women are at the well, one is taken, one is left, two are in bed, one is taken, one is left. The newer Bibles now have two men sleeping together in bed um you got to really be careful because the word of god is a treasure and we're to hide it in our hearts and take care of it and not profane it so that is my lesson for the night i love you all i thank you for joining me let your light shine let your light shine shine baby shine I hope to do podcasts more frequently, so I will see you the next time. God bless you.